Okay, I'm recording now. And we go, hey, hey, you guys. Let's do that. Look at the camera and say, hey, hey, you guys. <laughs> and welcome back to our channel. Okay, ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Hey, 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 hey you guys. guys. And welcome back to our channel. Okay. Okay. Um, so today we are here to recap our story of trying to conceive um, our infertility journey, whatever you want to call it. All right. So let's um, do this. <laughs> so let's do this. That's probably going to be so loud. His looking on. <laughs> I know, I can start uh, it's funny. <laughs> he looks really cute. <laughs> For those of you who are new here, um, my name is Chelsea. And I'm Eric. And we are currently pregnant with a little girl. We're due May 4th. May the 4th be with us. And... And her name shall be... No, we're not, we're not saying the name yet. <laughs> um, but it took us a little while to get here. So we're going to sort of recap that whole story. I actually did this a couple years ago, but my channel has kind of evolved since then and that video is a little bit, I don't know, I feel like that video is kind of depressing. Even though this is a kind of depressing topic, I just wanted to remake it. Remake the story and also our story has changed a little bit. We've added onto it, so. I mean, it's, it is a depressing topic, but there's light at the end of the tunnel whether I think it works or not. I don't know. My mindset was whether this works or not, we're not gonna let this affect us being happy in the future. So there are other ways of um, getting children and I don't know, I think we just didn't really wrap our minds around going, having to go through all of this. So yeah, it's a trial in life. Everybody's got trials, and this is emotionally and physically and financially um, it was a struggle for sure, but... Yes. So we're going to just, I guess, jump into where it all started. Back to 2014. 2014. The year we finally decided we were ready to have kids, or start trying at least. We've actually been married since 2009, and we didn't really plan on having kids that soon. I mean, we didn't even really talk about it that much, and it wasn't until we'd been married about five years. Like, when did we start talking about? I think it was towards the end of 2013 Christmas, maybe? Yeah, I think that's when we were kind of like... Just, let's, you know, let's maybe start a family, so... Yeah. We so, already had a dog. No, we hadn't had a dog yet. Oh, no. We got Poe when we were trying. That's right. Um, okay, so yeah, so 2014, I'm pretty sure it was July, summer 2014, that we decided, okay, let's do this. Let's get off. I wasn't really on birth control or anything, but we were pre definitely preventing because we were not ready to have kids yet, so we were waiting until we were ready. So that's when we, like, stopped preventing I guess and then we didn't even really start actively trying right then did we kind of we were really lazy about it I think we were just like whatever it'll happen I just for me I just felt uh, like it was gonna happen I remember right you being like what if I come home tomorrow at lunch <laughs> you were like all of a sudden like let's have a baby and yeah but know. I didn't think I didn't really like track things that much right away. I just really assumed it would happen. If we just stopped using birth control, that it would happen right away. But yeah. anyway, so we did that for a few months and then we start, and then I started tracking like getting ovulation kits and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then it was about a year before we, a year and lots of friends getting pregnant <laughs> before us that we made the call to my OB, or OBGYN, I guess. And I don't know, I, it's hard to remember that time, but just basically 
said, hey, we've been trying for a year and nothing's happened. And so, yeah, we started doing testing. And they started with Eric. Of course, they usually do. And I actually went through a program through the University of Utah where they test semen analysis and they get all the analytics, uh, mobility and health and strength and everything was fine. So that was, I don't know, five or six months long. Yeah, going, going how often month, do they test you? Going once a month, I think, and just get tested. And and that kind of helped them. This was their own study. This wasn't a part of our OBGYN, really. They, um, they recommended it, though. They recommended it. And um, anyway, that's kind of besides the point. But but it was like, I'm glad you did that program because, one, we got compensated for that. Not a ton. Like, uh, it was like two or $300. But you had to go quite often and get your blood checked mm -hmm. and your semen analysis. So you did like four or five of those. Yeah. And every time it came back, super duper. <laughs> yeah, super duper. Um, I don't remember. I think it was just a little bit above average. <laughs> yeah, good job. But um, that just kind of blew us away a little bit saying, you know, why is this not working? But while they were doing his testing, they also started and his was coming back normal, they started um, testing me, and we did the HSG test, which some of you might be familiar with that. I'm sure you are, but it's the dye test where they shoot dye into your uterus. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And, man, like, that was the beginning of all the procedures that would be done to me, and I was so freaked out. And, like, now it's like, yeah, Yeah, whatever. they shoot dye up there just to kind of clear a pathway, make sure that nothing is blocked, and... You can watch it live. You you look at yeah, basically the uterus and you see this dye going up the tubes and nothing was blocked. Everything was fine. Everything checked out on their end. And um, I don't remember how much that was. I don't know if our insurance helped with that at all. Um, I have all of our um, costs of all this fertility treatment and stuff in our in another video. It's I can link it down below, but it's basically how much... It cost us to get pregnant, basically. I think it was under $500. I think it goes around that much, yeah. Um, anyway, so we did that. We did, that came back normal. Everything looked great. The only thing they noticed, though, in that was that my uterus was, like, right over my left hip, remember? It was, like, way yeah, far over. They didn't make too big of a but deal. They, didn't they make... said most women have a tilted uterus. Right, but I also didn't trust a lot of the things that my OBGYN did because... They would call me and tell me, like, you can get off that prescription we put you on. I'm like, you never put me on a prescription. Like, they just were not, they were so busy that they were not, I just, I wasn't happy with them. It wasn't a personalized experience. Not at all. You know, and they it just, doesn't always. They just care about results. They don't really care who you are or what it is. So, I, get, I don't know, that was our experience, but. I get that it's a business, but I just, they seemed a little disorganized because they had so many people they were seeing. But also, so they wanted us to start doing IUI treatments. Then once we got those test results back and they weren't, um, everything was normal and we still weren't getting pregnant, they, well, they wanted to put me on Clomid and I wasn't like comfortable with that because I knew Clomid was for people who weren't ovulating and I was ovulating. I knew I was cause I was getting those tests every month and I always was ovulating. So I waited a few months, decided to ditch out on that OBGYN cause I was like over it and look into seeing a fertility specialist. And this is at the beginning of 2016. And I we started seeing another doctor, Dr. Porter. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked him, it's just like a family doctor through work. And I asked him about Clomid because I trusted him and he took a lot better care of us. Like it was very personalized. And I talked to him about our fertility issues and I asked him about Clomid. And he said, it doesn't hurt to give it a try. It's re really safe drug, you know, give it a try for a couple months and see if it does anything for you. So we did that. I hated it. It wasn't that bad. Some people have really bad experiences with Clomid, but it did make me feel really crampy and just kind of sick. And I'd, I'd get headaches on it too. But it was a invasive and inexpensive way. Non-invasive. Non-invasive non yeah. way <laughs> and non-expensive non way of possibly getting pregnant. Yeah. So. So we were like, okay, let's try it. Um, so we did it a couple months, and then um, we didn't see any results. Like, nothing happened. So we were just like, whatever, we'll just keep trying. So at this point, it had been a year and a half of trying because it was 
Almost two years. So. Because this is 2016 spring. So then. Um, so here's for the guys. It, it came down to the point where they're like, you take this Clomed, you know, and then you do it. You do it. Like, you do it. And I, for me, it was like, I don't know. There, it, we never really had any problems, you, I think. When but he says you do it, you mean you have sex. <laughs> yeah. Like, have sex when, yeah. like on this time period and on this time period. And yeah. the more sex you have, obviously, the higher chance they you have They basically say pregnant. do it every other day. And, like, there was so much stress so and... So much. That was very Anxiety, stressful. like, you know, come on, let's go, let's have sex. And... <laughs> Which is so fun. I think any other time in my life, I'd be like, yeah, all right. <laughs> and I don't know what it was, but just this particular time, it was like, well, I don't know. Like, it's kind of hard sometimes, so. Yeah, it was It was so stressful. It just wasn't a fun time. <laughs> so, yeah, moving on from that, this is about summer, let's say. I think it was summertime. End of summer, I called. Oh, no, I, I thought you had to get a... Um, referral to see a fertility specialist. And so I asked Dr. Porter, the doctor that told me that we could, we should try Clomid. I asked him, you know, Clomid, I told him Clomid's not working. So, um, can we get a referral? And he was like, yeah, sure. I don't think you need one though. And cause we looked at our insurance and we didn't need one. So we just called, um, the Utah Valley, or Utah Fertility Clinic Center. Gosh, I keep, I don't, Utah Fertility Center. <laughs> Here's what it is. Put it in nice, bold <laughs> yeah. font letters right here. Okay. Um, and um, <laughs> I made an appointment and scheduled a consultation with just whoever could see me, basically. Um, f- whoever could see us first. And so we were assigned a doctor, and it was like a month or six weeks before we got in. Um, but yeah, do you want to talk about what? That appointment was like, that was so long ago. That was two years ago. Um, Over two years ago. He basically invited us into his office. This was with Dr. Folk. He's kind of the main, the head guru there. And he's like, why aren't you getting pregnant? Let's map it out. And he literally got out a piece of paper and a pencil. <laughs> and he's like, this And he's is like, here's the check boxes. You need a man, you need a woman, you need sperm, you need eggs. You and need a uterus. Like, yeah. He's like, you have all of this. Your tests say that, you know, you guys are healthy and there's no reason you shouldn't get pregnant. He, so He did look over my chart, though, with my tilted, like my shifted uterus. And he did say that could be endometriosis. Right. Due to scarring, it could be moved yeah, um, out right. of place and that could prevent sperm from getting where it needs to go. Yeah. But it wasn't that big of a deal, you know. And it was just, I don't know, he's probably done that so many times. It's just like, let's get you pregnant. You know, let's get started. And um, we ended up doing one IUI, which was intrauterine insemination. where They literally take a long catheter and inject the sperm right there at um, by the ovaries with all the eggs. Well, um but you are on Fomara. They put me on Fomara for five days Which to help is like grow. Clomid. Yeah, to help grow follicles. You know, that would release an egg. It would be more likely for an egg or even two or more to be released. And they saw two really good ones. Um, they weren't too worried about like multiples or whatever. They were like, if we could get one of these to take, that'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we did the whole catheter IUI thing. I don't know. I just like really with every step of like the procedures that you had, like when you start doing, um, sorry, our dog Poe is in here. Um, when you start doing like each procedure, there's like a little amount of hope that comes from that. Like when we started taking Clomid, I was like, okay, I don't know if this will work, but wow, this is like a step into the right place. So I thought maybe it would work. And then when we did IUI, I was like, even though I knew the chances were lower, like 20%, or so, um, I still was like, oh my gosh, like we could be pregnant. Like this could work. It was, I don't know. How did you feel? Did you think it was going to work? I just, you know, it's kind of like another procedure. I, for me, I still wasn't super anxious and stressed out. I just thought this is something that needs to be done. (laughs) These doctors have done it before. I mean, this is years and years of science and studies and why wouldn't it work? Yeah. 
He gave us two. He told us, suggested that we do two to three of them. Mm, two to three, which for us and our insurance, it was about a thousand dollars. Yeah, it was. Again, I you can see the exact number of what it costs us. We pay everything out of pocket. It was just under just under a thousand, and but with the medicine and stuff, it was a little bit more. Yeah, you know, we did one, and we thought if we're gonna do a couple more, let's just put that money towards IVF. Right. So. This was end of 2016. Um, we also entered a contest, like a radio show was giving away an IVF cycle. That's when I made that original video of my of our infertility journey. Um, in your sh- short hair. In my yeah, I did have a really short hair, um, and just talked about how like yeah, we talked about our story up till then. But anyway, so. Um, we were kind of sharing with our, we, that was when we really opened up to like everyone about our fertility, our infertility struggles. And that was, we received so much support and love, like it's crazy. And so many people reached out to us and they're like, I'm going through the same thing. Or I've been to that doctor, you know, like I, I go to the Utah F- uh, Fertility Center, whatever. So it was really, it was good. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think it depends on each person. Yeah, um, not not everyone's going to want to share their story. Not everyone is going to want to share, but most people that were quiet and reserved ended up talking to us or sharing a yeah. message saying, you know, we've been there, we've done that, we've even adopted, we eventually had, you know, natural babies. Yeah. So, so. yeah, I mean, it. There's there was like a big release that came from telling, um, like being open about that, but then there was also some... It brings in some weird questions and weird comments, but it was mostly really good. Um, sorry, oh, Pope, you are, he just like can't get enough. I wish you guys could see, he's just like, love me, love me. Anyway, and so. And by this point, we had already had a couple friends that were struggling, really, really close friends that were struggling with yeah, infertility. Yeah, that's true. And they were just starting the process of the actual IVF process. Yeah. So yeah, we actually had one friend, uh, this couple that we're really close to, they were with our same doctor and they actually started IVF like beginning of January that next year. So 2017. So we learned a lot from them, but we just weren't ready at this time, beginning of 2017. You just weren't ready to do IVF yet. I still was like trying to come to grips with the fact that that would be what we would have to do. Honestly, I thought, let's just like keep trying. (laughs) I felt like we had just as good of a chance getting pregnant naturally because we have undiagnosed fertility. There was no reason why we weren't getting pregnant. So I feel like I felt like we had just as good of a chance of getting pregnant naturally as we did with an IUI, to be honest. And we wouldn't have to spend, you know, $1,000 or more just to do an IUI. So I just, in my, my mindset at that point was like, let's just chill out a little bit and... I don't know, sort of get ready to do IVF eventually. That's what we really have to do, but try naturally. Try naturally. I hate that. Just try normally. (laughs) Just do it. (laughs) Just do it. (laughs) I don't know. What was your mindset at the beginning of 2017, so a year before we... Uh, We probably could have done IVF, but we just, like, didn't. Well, part of it was I was get just just leaving self employment. I decided it's not worth That's it anymore, true. and didn't have an awesome job. Um, so yeah, That's I don't know. True. Part of it. Yeah, we did feel a little bit kind of, and I was actually I had just started a new job the last year, just a new position. So things felt a little bit I forgot in like our careers. It felt a little I don't know. What is this? Unbalanced yet? I don't know. No no money. (laughs) No money. (laughs) Yeah, and IVF, we knew it was, like, going to throw us over the edge. Ah. Financially, it's so expensive. But anyway, so that's what we did. Just tried normally (laughs) for a year. Kind of prepped ourselves to do IVF. And then at the end of last year, so about this time last year was when we called our fertility doctor again and scheduled a, an IVF consultation, which was scheduled for January 22nd, I think, was when we started filming, like, for real doing this YouTube channel. 
Yeah, and we showed up to his office, Dr. Folk's office again, and he's like, you're back. <laughs> That's right. He's like, did you get pregnant? Is that why you, I stopped seeing you? Because we just, like, dropped off, dropped off the face of the earth to them. We just, after one IUI, we were just like, nope, this is not going to work for us. So, yeah, so we met with him. Oh. Do you remember? I, like, I was hoping you'd remember what that... It was just a year ago. He's like, we're going to put you with one of our girls who schedule out everything. Yeah, it was really fast. He's like, oh, you want to do IVF? I mean, okay. that's how they're set up. It's, yeah. You can go have a meeting about financing um, if you need financing. The other meeting is going to be with whatever her um, position title is, but they gave it that out that calendar with... All the medication and shots and... Yeah, it was like, bam, okay, Appointments let's... and dates and it's like, here we go. You're going to start, you know, in a month and a half or... No, it was like the next week. I think we started our STEM injections on February 1st. I mean, we started, but yeah. the schedule's for a month, month and a half. Yeah, and... yeah. So, yeah, so we did IVF and um, it was a roller coaster. If you guys have been here since the beginning, thank you for hanging out with us this long um and you guys can go back and watch the detailed videos of what happened I felt like our cycle our IVS cycle was really successful obviously I'm pregnant but I mean um we were very lucky that um I responded well to the medications we got like 22 eggs and did and um got eight embryos in the end but we did do the PGS testing which we are very, very, like... Pro. Yeah, pro PGS testing because we had eight, eight, eight embryos and only three were normal. So, anyway, we If are really... you don't know what PGS testing, go look it up. Basically, they do an, a special test to see if they're chromosomally viable. Yeah, normal. They bas basically just look and see if the chromosomes look normal. If they don't look normal, then it's going to... that that embryo will either not implant or it will um, miscarry. So we just wanted to avoid that if we could. And we were lucky. Ours only mm -hmm. cost $150 per embryo. So, Well, I mean, so total was like 1200 bucks. Yeah, but, but I mean, for some people, it's like five grand, no matter but what. But we could have implanted two, and they could have been... Both. Duds. I don't yeah. know what you want to call them. So. <laughs> That's kind of sad to refer to them as duds. But, I mean, they, they aren't capable of life, basically. So however you want to view it, I know it's like controversial but whatever we just if it's an abnormal chromosome or embryo it's not actually going to sustain a life so it's not living anyway so we were so glad we did that we got our PGS test results back in March and then you know because of some we bought a house and just a number of different things we waited in, in, until I'm like stuttering <laughs> we waited until June to go back to get the frozen embryo transfer process going. We went in in June, and they found polyps oh. in me, in my uterus. Yeah. So, so, yeah, you can watch all this, but basically they found polyps. They had to do a hysteroscopy, and then just when we thought we were going to start actually get the embryo transfer going, they found a big cyst. It's huge. Yeah, just yeah. you know, month after month, something else pops up, something else pops up, and we don't we don't know if that was the main reason for not getting pregnant. For not getting pregnant, yeah. and it definitely could, it could has have been. it definitely has something to do with me. I think I've had a cyst before, also like end of two thousand sixteen. I ended up in the hospital because I had a kidney infection and a cyst that burst like all within the same twenty four hours and made me very ill. So I could have something going on there, but it's never been found. So we are still undiagnosed infertility. So that's exciting, not knowing why you can't get pregnant. But in the end, our frozen embryo transfer, we transferred one embryo, and that one embryo stuck. And we did our frozen embryo transfer. Do you remember what date? Oh, man. Don't can't put me it's on the spot very like important that. date, and he doesn't remember it. It's okay. I know our due date. <laughs> I always get our anniversary wrong. So. There are so many important dates last year. <laughs> I'm I know. sorry. I can't remember. It was August 15th. I actually... In August a, 15th. In, the, in a vlog the other day, I said the wrong date. So, 
so it's okay. Um, yeah, so August 15th was when we did our embryo transfer. Everything went great. Like I said, you can watch these videos, but um, yeah, everything went great, and I was super lucky enough to now be pregnant. It stuck, and we are due in just, yeah, we are halfway, 20 weeks, so just another 20 weeks. Or due. On May the 4th. So May the 4th. We're really, really super happy, lucky. I don't know. I just feel super lucky. I know it's like based in science and stuff too, but I just feel like lucky because there's so many people that um, aren't able to, like they their first round of IVF isn't successful. Like they don't get any embryos or their embryo, their first transfer doesn't stick. So we just feel every day just feel super lucky. Like I look down and I'm like, is that me? Is this bump me? So anyway, um, that's our story up until now. Um, I I wanted to do the, to do this as well because I feel like when I was really struggling, um, I would watch videos like this where people would tell their story about what they're going through, and it's just so nice to relate to somebody, um, even though I didn't know them. <laughs> it's just nice to relate um, to what they were going through. Like, oh my gosh, I totally or I did that and it didn't work or I know what you're feeling and so we know how you feel. It and there's, sucks. And there's also going to be those people who just run their mouths and they have <laughs> no idea what they're talking about. You yeah. know, they give comments like, well, why did you buy a dog first? Babies are so much easier. And have you tried ovulation kits? <laughs> have you guys heard of IVF? <laughs> um, I mean, I there's so many and you just have to roll with it. Just Most, I mean... All, everyone, I think, just wants to be helpful. Or they just say dumb things because I don't know what else to say. So you just have to be patient and just rely on those people that do know what you're going through, like have like real empathy for what you're going through because they've been through it too. Just rely on those people and don't worry too much about what anyone else says because it's just they can't relate. But we can. We know what you're, <laughs> you guys are going through if you're here because you too are struggling um, to get pregnant. We know what it's like. But we also know that it can happen because I had so many times where I just thought this would never happen for us. And it did. So you got to stay hopeful that it will happen to you one day. You just have to keep holding out for that. And we even had discussed, you know, like, what if IVF doesn't work? Well, then there's other options too. It's not like how we would have planned out our lives. But, you know, if we weren't able to get pregnant through IVF, then we would look into a adoption and that wasn't like you know anything tragic like it was like it's an option for us and we were happy for it so anyway any other last words you can do it <laughs> you can hang in there guys um and let us know feel free to comment down below tell us your story um share any advice you guys have um because i know a lot of you are on the other end here as well you guys are also some of you are also pregnant now um give some good advice in the comments and some love to those who are still in the thick of it so that's what that's one reason why I keep going with this channel because I love the community on here and I love connecting with you guys and being a support because it's brought me a lot of comfort so I feel like I'm just trying to give back so anyway that's it for today, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and <laughs> go ahead and subscribe if you're not already and we will catch you in our next one. Bye.